Okay. Uh, anybody left behind my class? Anybody stay? Okay, one or two of you. Good, bless you. All right. Here's how I always do these kind of problems. The first thing you want to do is identify the type of titration. There's four different types. To do that, you have to identify what every acid and base are. This is why it's helpful to know what's strong and what's weak. What is this? Strong, strong acid. Strong base. Strong base. Yeah. If you have one, anything in the first two columns, an alkali or an alkali earth, it's going to form a strong acid or a strong base, whatever the, a strong base, I guess, in our case. So this is a strong acid, strong base titration. Okay? And uh, I'll get my flow chart out. So those of you who are uh, like following that, you can see it as well. So here's my flow chart. If you're not in my class, I guess ask somebody in my class for this. But we always identify the type. Next step, uh, you find the millimoles of acid and base and figure out which one is in excess. So what we do is, let's say the acid first. You multiply these two numbers and you'll get, oh, what will you get? Uh, 10 millimoles. Is that right? Let me close this. Make sure I get all my numbers right. Okay, 10 millimoles. And then you multiply these to find the millimoles and you'll get, I think, 20 millimoles. So what's in excess, the acid or the base? base. The base. So now you go back in my flow chart, you want to get this in your mind. You find that the strong base is in excess. So that's called the strong base region that we're in right now. And well, how do you solve that? Well, you follow this. So we're going to use these simple equations right here to solve for it. So let me show you how that works. We will say, and the base is in re, uh, excess by how much? Ten. Yeah, 10 millimoles. I got that from subtracting these two numbers. Excess of CSOH. Well, the nice thing of knowing it's a strong base is that's equal to the OH minus concentration when I divide by the total volume. Total volume is 200 plus 50, 250 milliliters. This will give me the molarity, which is equal to 0 0.040 molar. That's the OH minus concentration. Uh, the POH is the negative log of OH minus. In this case, it's going to be 1.40. So the pH is 14 minus the pOH, which is equal to 12.6. There we go. There's the pH. Can you confirm that it, in fact, is a strong base region? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's a huge number, close to 14. So it's definitely a strong base region. Now let's try another one. Uh, let's try... Try this one. So you just want to get comfortable doing this kind of stuff. <laughs> NAF. And this has 0 0.10 molar. And let's say this is 10 milliliters. And we have HCl added. And this is 0 0.10 molar and 5 milliliters. I want to find the pH again. So, I always use the same procedure that you just saw a second ago on my flow chart. Step one, identify the type. So, NAF, what is that? This is a weak base. Yeah, weak base. How do you know it's a weak base? Well, sodium is one of your uh, spectator ions. So, you have F minus, that comes from HF, which is a weak acid. So, this is a weak base. What's HCl? Strong acid. Strong acid. So this is a weak base, strong acid titration. That's important to know. Okay, so next step, find the millimoles of the acid and base. So I'm going to multiply these numbers together. Uh, 0.1 times 10, that's going to be 1 millimole. And 0.1 times 5, that's 0 0.5 millimoles. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, this one, whenever you have a weak base, 
or a weak acid, it's helpful to write out the whole reaction. So I'm going to do that. Uh, but some of you are doing this in your head, which is totally fine. If you can do that already, that's great. So there's the reaction. Uh, oops, there we go. And NaF, that's one millimole. HCl, 0.5 millimoles. And we start off with zeros of each of these. You subtract off the 0.5. 5, and add 0 0.5 here, and you'll say you get 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0, and uh, 0 0.5. This is helpful, because you know, oh, wait a minute, I have this, which is a weak base, and I have this one, which is a weak acid. Buffer. Yeah, it's a buffer. If you were in any way confused, you could go here. Uh, oh, I have my weak base. I have the weak base in excess. Yeah, it's the buffer region. We confirmed that. So you could have known the table, or you could have written it out. Either way, you would figure out the buffer. So I'm going to use the Henderson Hasselbach to solve this. So the Henderson Hasselbach, pH equals, and you'll be given this equation, plus the log of the base over the acid, pKa, whatever that is, plus the log. Base over the acid, 0 0.5 over 0 0.5. Oh, pH equals pKa. This has a special name. What is it? It's called the midpoint. The midpoint occurs whenever you have equal amounts of weak base and weak acid. That's the midpoint. pH equals pKa. In this case, pKa is 3.14, and I knew that because the Ka... Oh, I didn't write down the K, I just wrote down the K. There we go. Okay, so there's a little sampler of titrations. Uh, let me do one more thing for titrations. Yeah. How did I find the value of PKA? Okay, I'll show you where I got that secret. Where did I get um, where is that handout? There's a, I'm going to give you this on the test. You have to find HF. It's right here. See that? 3.14. Yeah, so it's from the table. I think if I read that right. Or 3.18. That's okay. So 3.18 is actual number. Okay? So on my test, you're going to get everything from this table, which will be on the back page. So if you ever need a KA, you just get it right off of here. Okay, let me show you one more thing, at least from titrations, unless you have more questions. Uh, for my class, definitely, I have this titration worksheet, which gives all this. But if you ever need any of the graphs, pH versus a volume, let's say you have, like we did first, this strong, I think it was a strong acid, strong base titration. Always looks like that. It looks like a perfect S. The inflection point is called the equivalent point. There's no buffer region or anything like that. The lower part is called the strong acid region at low pH. The upper part at high pH is called the strong base region. What would happen if I took this plot and said, what's pOH versus volume for a strong acid, strong base titration? It'd be exactly the opposite. There's that equivalence point. <coughs> POH plus pH, remember, is 14. So I'm just subtracting 14 from here to get the opposite graph, essentially. OK. Let's do uh, the one we just did, a weak base, strong acid titration. pH versus volume. If you had to graph that, it would start up high, because you start with the weak base. There's this little hump, a flat region, and then the inflection point. This is called, I'll label it in a different color, the inflection point is called the equivalence point. This here is called the buffer region. <coughs> the end part, the last region, is called the strong acid region. And then right here, this is the midpoint. Midpoint. That's where pH equals pK. Okay, so you want to be com comfortable graphing these. They always look the same. So once you know all four graphs, you're set. Okay.
But I just get a couple of those in case you're ever asked to graph something like that. Okay, any other questions on titration? <laughs>